Hello, everyone. We're here today to talk about another Liberal omnibus bill, an omnibus security bill, Bill C-59. At the outset, I will say that in the last Parliament, before voting on Bill C-51, Prime Minister Trudeau said he welcomed the preventative arrest measures provided in that important piece of security legislation. Today, he is undoing those same important preventative arrest measures, all to keep an ill-advised election promise. Today's legislation makes it clear that Liberals don't take public safety seriously. In the days following horrific attacks in Europe, and one day after a court in Montreal convicted a Canadian of attempting to leave to train with ISIS, they are watering down Canadian security measures, all to maintain their election promise with respect to C-51. They're making it more difficult for law enforcement and security agencies to protect Canadians on our soil. In fact, these changes set our laws back specifically from the tragic lessons learned from the murder of Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent. And they do that in two specific ways. First, by changing the Counseling Commission of a Terrorism Offense to counseling, actively inducing someone to commit an offense, they make it much more difficult than the older standard which was knowingly advocating or promoting the commission of a terrorist offence. Second, the new measures will allow detention of a security risk only when necessary to prevent a terrorist attack. The old standard allowed for detention in a court-supervised ma uh, manner, but when it was likely that there was a terrorist attack that could be permitted, uh, committed by someone. These two specific changes make it harder for law enforcement to deal with the rapidly evolving security risk environment. And I'll use the sad case of Warrant Officer Vincent because both of these changes would not have permitted the detention of the radicalized young man who took the life of one of our soldiers. First, he was actively promoting the commission of terrorist attacks, so that would have given law enforcement a tool in that case. Second, by changing the standard from likely to prevent a terrorist attack to necessary, the burden is far too difficult and law enforcement will be encumbered and will be impossible for them to keep Canadians safe. And as we've seen, the globe is a dangerous spot. My colleague Pierre Paulu en français. Merci. Merci, Erin. Bonjour tout le monde. Écoutez, aujourd'hui, on voit que pour euh, tout simplement respecter une campagne, euh, une promesse de campagne électorale, euh, et après avoir Justin Trudeau et Ralph Goodell, elle avait voté euh, il y a deux ans pour C-51. Donc aujourd'hui, on voit le bill, le projet de loi Omnibus C-59 arriver, qui euh, fait en sorte maintenant de compliquer le travail euh, des forces de l'ordre, de, de compliquer le travail de la GRC, des services de renseignement canadiens. Tout simplement, encore une fois, pour respecter une, une promesse de campagne. Euh, on voit que, exemple, dans le cas de l'adjudant Patrice Vincent au Québec, il y a, en 2014, une, une situation dont les renseignements étaient connus. Et à ce moment-là, les policiers ne pouvaient pas intervenir. C-51 venait permettre aux policiers d'intervenir et aurait pu permettre de sauver la vie de l'adjudant Vincent. Là, aujourd'hui, avec C-59, on veut ramener ça à la façon dont c'était fait à l'époque. Et le cas de l'adjudant Vincent est encore un cas, malheureusement, qui... Euh, des terribles événements seraient arrivés parce que les forces de l'ordre ne pourront plus intervenir. Et en plus de ça, C-59 change certains mots dans la loi qui vont faire en sorte que ça va être beaucoup plus compliqué de justifier des interventions auprès des gens qui se préparent ou qui ont des intentions d'actes terroristes au Canada. Donc, avec la situation mondiale actuelle, tout ce qu'on voit partout, justement, quelqu'un qui a été arrêté, détenu, qui est reconnu coupable de... de de planifier d'aller faire des actions terroristes à l'étranger, un Québécois, quelqu'un de Montréal. On voit que c'est vraiment pas le temps de diminuer, diminuer la force de nos, euh, de nos services de renseignement, de nos forces policières. Il faut vraiment faire le contraire et s'assurer d'être fort, de faire partie des, des grandes ce monde qui renforcissent leurs mesures pour prévenir le crime terroriste, et surtout ici au Canada. Advice the federal government has received with respect to the commissioner position and the concept of a super CERC allowing intelligence and security oversight over all agencies of government, I think is generally a good idea, and I've been supportive of that for several years, and I believe our caucus is supportive of that move. Well, 
oversight that is built into this bill. Are the Conservatives are supportive of that? Um, we, had, we provided some advice alongside the NDP with respect to setting up the Committee of Parliamentarians for oversight. The concept of super CERC was also recommended to Minister Goodale at that time. So we're going to have to discuss it as a caucus, but on a preliminary basis, we think in this you know, dynamic threat environment where we're with C-51, the last government was encouraging agencies to work together to keep Canadians safe. That degree of expansive oversight is probably overdue. Of getting uh, people off the no-fly list. Your party was in power. Can you talk a little bit about how difficult that is and what your reaction is to how this bill is dealing with that? I, I think some of those changes were overdue because I think families were understandably frustrated, particularly when there were cases of children on no-fly lists because of repetitive names or because of misidentification. We not only needed a domestic way to resolve those issues quickly, we need a way to work with the Americans to resolve those issues quickly for, for families. I don't see those measures with the Americans being addressed in this legislation, but we will see how the government explains that their changes in Canada can apply on a North American basis. across the street. What's your overall reaction again to this legislation? Well, we think it's a dangerous step back from certain provisions that allowed law enforcement to intercede when there was a threat to public safety in Canada from a commission of a terrorism attack. We use specifically the example of the tragic case of Warrant Officer Vincent, Quebec, where police were aware of a radicalized young man but did not feel they had the threshold requirement to detain him. The changes made in the last parliament would allow law enforcement to detain in a court-supervised manner risks such as those. The two specific changes they've made today with respect to having to counsel in the commission of an offence and detention being necessary as opposed to likely to prevent an attack will actually make it hard for law enforcement to do their job. It's a big step back by the government to keep an election promise that was ill-advised by Prime Minister Trudeau. He voted for Bill C-51. He praised the specific and limited use of preventative arrest in the case of, of risks of terror attack, yet now he's undoing those same preventative arrest measures. Once again, of all his broken promises, I would have wished he broke this one, because this is about keeping Canadians safe. He's, he's keeping this one and really not listening to what law enforcement has been asking for in terms of tools. Just to go back, in, in terms of the uh, powers to irturbe um, uh, a terrorist plan, disrupt, thank you. Um, it's, it's some of the things like that that you are um, disappointed that are being clawed back, some of those things were deemed um, unconstitutional or going against the Charter by certain experts. So do, do you still maintain that these should be still in place, even though some legal experts think that they wouldn't hold up in court? Well, there were some, uh, some people that weighed in on those measures. The interesting thing is uh, the previous chair of CSIS had said to a parliamentary committee that they use disruption powers, I think it was over two dozen times, but had yet to uh, use those disruption powers in a way that violated the Charter. And so certainly C-51 respected the Charter. It also made sure that the court-mandated process was a part of all decisions related to peace bonds or detentions. Now this bill is going to make it harder for police to satisfy the burden before they detain a risk. And I will tell you, Mr. Driver, who was the gentleman caught on his way to commit an attack, that this threat environment with the radicalized element, you have to be able to move swiftly. The change to have have a standard of having to counsel someone as opposed to knowingly promoting terrorism, I think is a foolhardy standard for the government to use. Law enforcement will be reticent to criticize their own government, but anyone familiar with this area just knows Justin Trudeau set back our security measures. Law enforcement always had to enforce them with the court and with the charter in mind, but these moves are very reckless in our opinion. Was talking about Bill C-51 in terms of that they wanted more of a rollback on some of the powers. Um, what is your take on that? Because there doesn't seem to be a lot of rollback. Are you surprised that they didn't go further? 
Well, the two specific rollbacks they made, and I know the that uh, the Justice Minister in her press conference mentioned the change back to a, a necessary to prevent an attack standard. That was the exact standard that prevented law enforcement from stopping the attack in Quebec against Patrice Vincent. I would recommend to that minister, who was not in the last parliament, to read the testimony from Louise Vincent, the sister of Warrant Officer Vincent, who had said law enforcement needed that different standard to apprehend someone that was a risk. The court would still determine whether that person was eventually found guilty of one of these offenses, but we should be making sure that law enforcement have the tools they need to react swiftly before something happens, not mire them down. So the NDP didn't like any elements of C-51. Like everything, Justin Trudeau tried to have two foots in both camp, two feet in both camps, one foot in both camps. It's late in session. He voted for C-51, yet always had vague suggestions he would change it. Today he's keeping that promise and he's putting Canadians at risk as a result. Merci beaucoup, thank you.